Hello, everybody. Today, we are showing featured entries from the December Art Dare, and we are going to be announcing the February Art Dare. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't take an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, professional development, and workshops. The December Art Dare was to create a visual map of your brain. So we asked all of you to visualize what you think is going on in your brain. And the first artist who I believe is here live with us in the chat, hello, Holly, did this clay sculpture and talks about how it's a representation of her journey towards self-acceptance as someone who battles chronic depression. And so this concept of beautiful thoughts, ideas growing in our minds, just as flowers grow stronger in soil that's been broken and tilled. So we have a lot of brainstorming here. Lauren, what do you think? How did Holly do with this work? I think that this is such a cool concept because, you know, there's the image. I think this would hit differently, say, if it was a painting where you're you're portraying plants growing out of a brain like okay yeah but what is really cool here is the consideration of medium this is not only a sculpture it is a clay sculpture and clay is basically dirt and so you have that okay the brain is a place to be tilled the brain is is sort of the earth where these things grow out of and so i'm really connecting a lot with that medium choice conceptually. So smart. I just love the range of texture because we have things like the petals that we see above and some of them really look like they're blooming. But then do you see how as you get to the lower part of the brain, things start to separate a little mm -hmm. bit more. They're a little bit coarser. And so this definitely isn't a super pretty version of, oh, gorgeous flowers coming out. I mean, you do feel, I guess, the pressure and mm -hmm. grit of that surface that reads almost like a wound. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, you can you can sense the struggle in the way the clay is worked. And that's another reason why this medium is so great is that it has, it conveys touch really, really well. You were talking about the textures and I also really like the embodiment aspect of it. This, or the, maybe that's not the right word. The, the, the brain is an organ too. And so you mm. get that sense too, that you are, you're holding something that is uh, alive or maybe slippery in some way, like, especially down towards the bottom where it turns into the, the brain. What are they? Lobes? folds. What is brain made out of even? Matter. <laughs> matter. Stars are made out of matter. <laughs> Parvi says it looks so alive. And Neil says the brain texture also looks like dry cracked soil. And 7A says those flowers are working great with the bumpy brain texture. Yeah, I, I love the flowers. I, I haven't mentioned that yet. I really love the flowers. That's okay. a great matter. Okay, now Very we know. <laughs> but what's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> we, we are not the people to talk about science here. That's why we're artists. Sorry, guys. Exactly. Next artist is Elvera. And Elvera used acrylic pour oil paint, acrylic on canvas. And so Alvera talks about the green shows that one's brain has plasticity. There can be new growth, new passions, which is the red. And Alvera says, I struggle to find my words. It's like those black squares and dots are the missing information. And Alvera says, my mind runs in loops and looping a few times since my thinking looks like spirals rather than circles. And then the blue is the negative thinking. What do you think? Oh, that's so interesting reading all the personal symbols that go into this piece. And I think the thing for me that really drew my attention, first of all, is those little black dots, the patterning in there. And I was really tickled to read how those are 
not are the missing pieces where you can't find your words because this is also how I visualize I always lose my words all the time and this is also how I visualize it so I love being able to make that connection and then have it reinforced with reading your statement what about you Clara what's what's uh what's your favorite part in this I love the mood I think it is very layered on one hand you could say that the person looks calm but the thing is there's so much activity happening behind them and so there is quite a bit of contrast going on in there but i think it's remarkable that elvira is weaving together so many different languages i mean we have that pattern that's happening from the acrylic pour we also have things like the swirls, which are very graphic looking, but then also on the left here, that skin tone is mm -hmm. very, very subtle and muddy compared to everything else, which is very, very bright. And so I'm amazed that Elvera was able to combine so many different elements and yet it totally feels cohesive to me. Yeah. Yeah, same. I was also marveling at how that expression is so pensive and so silent or still, still, very still. And that contrasts so greatly with what is going on in the brain. And yet somehow it doesn't feel like they are fighting each other. They feel totally connected. And that is cool to see how excellently that was done. All right, next artist we're gonna look at is Emmett Bush. And so Emmett explains, I am a transgender Jewish artist living in California. So we're looking at a work that's acrylic paint, colored pencil and pen. And Emmett explains, my work explores the intersections of neurodiversity, spirituality and mental health. So we have a lot of different themes going on in here, scientists, mystics, cultural mythologies, and so this is a piece about a stressful incident in order to redirect, Emmett says, my mind away from an oncoming panic attack. And so we're seeing the emotional dimensions versus the mundane world, one foot in this world, one foot in the imaginary space. So, wow, so much happening in this composition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what is sticking with me in this piece is the way, the first thing I noticed is how the movement of the writing. I can't read all the writing on the screen here, but I don't really need to either because it is the the pattern of it, the movement of it, and the way that it 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 sort of tracks the the movement of that body into the page and the flipping of the pages. I think that is really pulling me, engaging me through the piece. I love the way that the text radiates outwards. And if you look up close, you can see that the letters next to the head are smaller than the letters that are coming mm. outwards. So these little tweaks in scale that I think really help push the narrative. And then there's this whole other world at the bottom. How do you mm -hmm. read some of those images? I feel like they are little nuggets or symbols from life that are supposed to clue me in to what's what's going on or, or parts of, of the person, some sort of oblique portraiture. But I, I don't know enough and I'm curious. I wanna know more, like why? what is the view what who are who is the person that we're looking at with the legs pointed down and am i looking at a cake down there whose cake is that why is there cake like okay. these kinds of things karasu says you guys are so creative i could never have come up with any of these i think the way i like to consider it is that everybody has a totally different take especially when we're talking about brains. <laughs> Literally every brain is different. And I love seeing that diversity. I mean, that's one of my favorite parts of seeing everybody's interpretation. Oh, and Emmett is here live with us in the chat. Hi, Emmett. Emmett says, 
The bottom is my view during the stressful event near a fire pit. Gotcha, oh, fantastic. Gotcha. I'm so glad you could jump in here and let us know more about the piece. I think for me, Lauren, the coolest thing about this piece is that it sparks curiosity. So mm -hmm. I may not have all of the details about what Emmett is talking about, but I think the purpose is that you can feel those emotions and how compelling they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I, I think where I'm feeling it most is the, the repetition of the person. I think about times when I am feeling very stressed out or in pain and how things slow down and I can almost track my body moving through space. So you'd see a after image and I, I am reminded of that when I look at this, at this picture. Next artist is Paul McKinley. And Paul talks about feeding a notion, which is a visualization of Paul's brain. And Paul explains, little flying fairy represents an idea that is feeding on my experiences while the bunny, the driver of the ship, looks on as an interloper is spotted. So we have these initial versions of the piece. We can see how Paul sketched out with the pencil, started to build up the pen. And then we have many versions here. So we're not just looking at a single piece. What do you think? This is so wild. I feel like my dad would really like this. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Your dad, the male artist. Oh uh, yeah, my dad's M -A -I -L. Yeah, I'm a postal artist. And there is a whimsical aspect to this is a little bit Alice in Wonderland, not just because there's a white rabbit, but there is a, a whimsy to it, even in the title, Feeding a Notion. I, I never took that uh, literally, and I really love that you did. <laughs> I love that you went there. Uh, so yeah, right now I'm just uh, basking in the, in, in the play that's going on here. Oh, look. Paul Hi, is Paul. with us live in the chat. I'm so glad you could join us. I mean, I'm blown away by your pen technique, Paul, because if I go up close, I mean, all that texture and the faces and you made them look so worn and then them getting smaller into the distance. I mean, I am just mesmerized by your line work. I'm always very in awe of people that can do crowd scenes because I draw one figure or two figures. I'm like, oh, that's enough. I couldn't do any more. I couldn't possibly do more. Three is the max, but you got you got the good crowd going on. You, you got this whole group here with their ears and their yellow eyes. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm into it. Also, I like that this one figure on the left is leaving the border of the page because at the top part we have this radiating pattern so we sort of expect things to be lined up but then this one figure begins to enter the composition and, and that i don't know it looks sort of like a cord that's going into that guy's yeah, forehead it's like an umbilical cord or yeah. a feeding tube or a bagpipe i don't know <laughs> It's very disruptive, though. I can't, st I mean, in a good way. Like, I can't stop looking at that. And then I'm sort of hypnotized by the swirl in the background. And I, I just think you did such a great job with all of those various aspects, Paul. Okay. Paul says feeding tube. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> go. Gotcha. You know, they all have, this is, they all have gauges here and I have gauges too. So this is, this is just, but these gauges, I, I keep wanting that feeding tube to be going through one of those holes and not in the center of the, I'm like, there's the hole. That's where it's, <laughs> I'm having a moment here. <laughs> you, you certainly are. Okay. Next artist is Neil and Neil is indeed live with us here in the chat. So we're excited Hi, to talk about your work. And so Neil did two paintings. The first one is about recovery from a major depression, feeling like my quote, my brain was once lush, but now barren and rebuilding um, life. And then the second piece is social media addiction. 
especially short form videos. I guess we're not helping much, Neil, because <laughs> we're doing so many of them. And Neil explains, I watch a lot of shorts, makes me feel like crap. My brain turns to soup, but it's hard for me to stop watching shorts. Okay, well, we also have some brainstorming for the <laughs> visual map of your brain project, which we always like to see. And I, I just love that facial expression. Of oh yeah, it feels like a, a deep D, a deep D face, you know? The, yeah, it does. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and it's fantastic. And great thumbnail here, Neil, mm -hmm. you really organized the composition beautifully. And oh, oh my gosh, this is so luscious. I mean, isn't that flower just so Ugh. rich? It's the saturation contrast. You really got it down. I'm taking notes here. And also the texture contrast. I don't know yeah. what brushes you're using. I just got an iPad and I'm really studying people's brush strokes because you, I feel like they really make the pieces. And I just, I love how much detail that you've put in here while still considering the whole scene. Like you're, what's the word? Proportions from small bits to large bits are very cohesive. I also think, Neil, you did such a great job of putting in two emotions that are very different. So you're talking about the depression and how harrowing that was. But I love the facial expression and that very gentle holding mm -hmm. of the flowers. I mean, you really got both emotions into the piece. And yet, as an image, it really flows beautifully. So you did a great job balancing all those things. Now, how about the, the shorts, watching the shorts image? What do you think of this one? <laughs> I feel like this, everybody has to make a, if you're an artist, you have to have one painting that is about your dismay about being on the internet. That's what they're going to look back on in 200 <laughs> years. They're going to say, oh, this was such a big deal during this time. And so I, you know, you got your rite of passage image here. I love how the phone, the, it's the, the symmetry of it. It's like you've got a phone coming out of your head and you got a phone in your hand, except the phone coming out of your head's like a million phones because each one of those tiny things looks like a tiny screen. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious. Okay, it's confession time, everybody. Who has an addiction to shorts? I don't think I have an addiction, but dude, once I get on TikTok and there's celebrity gossip, I'm there. Like, I can't leave. I need to know about what Jennifer Lopez wore at the fashion show, and I need all the tea. I just, do you have a shorts thing? it's it's the same kind of thing it's really sneaky it gets you i have no uh desire to look at shorts in any point of my life but say when i wake up and i'm checking my phone and then something appears on instagram or whatever suddenly i'm googling billy eilish and i don't know why i don't i i know like one song by billy eilish because i'm old now and don't know things but <laughs> well <And> wormhole <laughs> holly is well on the way kara sue says addicted to bookstore videos oh that must be a whole other oh, universe i could get into that oh no don't don't tell me that neil says watch the most shorts woman in the bathroom i sit for hours <laughs> <laughs> oh my god charismatics is the opposite really long videos like video essays and it looks like 7A also is a YouTube addict. I guess we, we are not helping very much <laughs> in any of those areas. Okay, the next artist is Anna. And I do believe Anna is here. Yep, live here in the Hi, chat. Anna. So I'm glad you can join us, Anna. And so Anna explains, I've been researching polyvagal theory. Is a theory that suggests our nervous system operates in three different states, mm. safe and social, fight or flight, and shut down. And Anna explains, I found it enormously helpful understanding my mental health struggles and trauma responses. And so Anna is exploring polyvagal theory visually. So we're gonna have a bunch of pieces 
that we're going to look at. Have you heard that before? I've never heard of that. The yeah, Google so theory. it's it's in this book, uh, The Body Keeps the Score. That's where I heard of it. Uh, Body Keeps the Score got kind of big 10 years ago. I don't know, 15 years ago. But um, basically, it's like you, you have a your system, you have different physical responses uh, as you get more and more stressed out. So like when your stomach gets like all upset or whatever, that like activates a different part of that. Like, uh, was it the vagus nerve or something? I don't know. Uh, we should focus on the artwork though. I could go down that rabbit hole forever here. Um, but so I'm, what I want to know from Anna is I'm interested how each one represents a different part of the polyvagal theory because you broke this down to three pieces. So yeah, which goes with which is what I would want to know. Well, Ryan is saying it has to do with the vagus nerve that runs from the brain down to the stomach. I yeah. love that everybody contributes in this way. I, I really like this one, Lauren, where we see the three faces and they're, they're sort of squished up in the mm -hmm. upper right-hand corner but I love the dark blue figure. I love the expression and the way they're just sinking back into that space. Yeah, I have secret knowledge about some of this that uh, Anna has been- Oh, you do? <laughs> Anna's been really exploring with lots of different colors recently. And it's super cool to see some of these colors come to light in these new compositions. So yeah, I also, I also peeped the blue there. I was very happy to see it. <laughs> Anna says, to learn more about polyvagal theory, there is a great podcast called Stuck Not Broken with Justin Sincheri. I don't know if I said that correctly. Well, I, I love, I've never heard of this before. And it's so cool to learn about these things and then to see it reflected mm -hmm. in the artwork. And I, I also found this one very funny with the 40 in the background and the birthday cake. But then there's these really violent uh, yeah. marks that start to look like text, but I can't read them exactly this, because this I, I do think those numbers, yeah, they, they cause a lot of emotions when we hit those milestones. Yeah, this one feels definitely the most stressful to me out of all of them, just in the way that the marks are made too. A lot of the, the other two are more rounded uh, and the colors stay yeah within their boundaries and yeah and that other one it becomes more fractured we have some prizes to give out everybody the honorable mention goes to holly lewis congratulations holly we were thrilled to see your work mm -hmm. and everybody's work i mean that's really the whole purpose is for all of us to get to show you off because we know how fabulous you are and the prize winner is Paul McKinley. Congratulations, Yay! everybody, for your wonderful work on this art dare. Yeah. we were, Before we, we get into the next art dare, join our new Open Studios Club. I have started running these sessions. We just had two of them this past week. And dude, Lauren, okay, th this is a good sign of a good program. I got work done because I had this painting. It's been sitting there forever and I knew I was not going to work on it. But mm -hmm. then I went to Open Studios. I was like, oh my God, I got this work done. <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe I need to join Open Studios so Club. <laughs> I got plenty of work. No. I need to <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is basically a hangout where we're all on voice and we work on our personal projects and we chat and share everything. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. It's like art party. It's awesome. So check it out. The link is in the YouTube video description below. Okay. One of my favorite things. Oh, I have cool. such a sweet tooth. Do you, Lauren? I do. Actually, I spent all of my afternoon in studio trying to ignore the big bag of peanut butter M&Ms that I had bought a couple days ago. Oh. oh, it was brutal. It was brutal. I'm out of willpower for the day. I should have brought them here, though, to hold them up for dessert, uh, dessert theme here. Who here has a sweet tooth? Because the people who don't, I'm like, is there something wrong with your taste buds? Like there's something physically off in your taste buds. I mean, I couldn't live without dessert. Like if I go a day, and I don't get chocolate. I feel like something's wrong. Is that if your something favorite Something didn't dessert? work out that day. 
it's not my favorite dessert, but it's the one I need to have daily. Like the other things, like Sour Patch Kids, I can have those once in a while. But chocolate is daily. Have to have it. <laughs> Junior mints and stuff, you know. <laughs> oh, I want some chocolate now. So, so we're going to ask you to create, I know, I want some too. <laughs> create a 2D or 3D artwork of any dessert. And so I think a lot of you know that I have done a lot of dessert with the Bread Fairy. I mean, she actually brought over these brownie remnants and so we just had like these big slices of mm. brownie that she had like trimmed and it lasted about an hour in our house so yeah that was really good <laughs> oh i just love the lighting and all of these clara they make the dessert so delectable and glistening and you know how there's always a shine on desserts that makes them yes. appealing yeah yeah you got it <laughs> So, okay, it seems like we have a lot of people. Oh, man, Ben and Jerry's, I just went and bought mm. two tubs today. <laughs> Tell us in the chat, what are some of your favorites to eat? Manette says, polishing off cookies today. Perfect. And Karasu says, kawaii dessert art. Mm. And we also have hibiscus who says, I prefer savory, but still sometimes crave sweet foods. Well, you know something, there, there's a whole area of art history and contemporary art that is about food. And I love these paintings by Emily Eveleth. I, I find them so seductive, but also horribly scary. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, this one looks like a wound, but I also want to eat it, which makes me feel yeah. conflicted in myself. <sighs> Yeah, they also is... look really big. I mean, this is a donut that's a thousand feet tall. I mean, there's something really gargantuan about the way she paints them, which I just think is brilliant. This is very bodily. This donut looks like other things. <laughs> and Jazz is saying, 3D, can I just bake a cake? It has to be... Well, I don't know. We, we we didn't discuss that. What do you think, Lauren? It does making oh. a cake, making a dessert, does that count? Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Not for this one. We are gonna have a whole separate art dare that's gonna be about making cakes. It's cake art. We are? I'm I'm saying oh. it. There's cake art. Cake art is a thing. We need to honor that because whoever's gonna make a cake and make it like fancy for this is going to win. I'm gonna pick the baked cake. So we have to make it a okay. separate thing. For the future, we will have a cake baking art dare or something like that. But for now, we do have Klaus Oldenburg's soft sculptures. And these are very big. I mean, this thing is probably almost as tall as a person. And I, I always wonder, like, Klaus Oldenburg, are you trying to make it disgusting? Because he has some other pieces. <laughs> this one, which is an ice cream cone. That is hilarious to me. But then, oh, this hurts me to look at. It's like a weird chair. Like a, a chair that's yeah. not for humans. It's very gory. And then he also has pieces like this. And so it's sort of funny because we think about dessert as being so enticing, but we're looking at artists right now for whom are presenting the dessert in a completely different manner. So I, I've always enjoyed seeing that. How about this one? <laughs> that was a good one. Anna says, curious, do you take pitches for art dares because I have a lot of ideas? Yes, you can suggest. We don't have any guarantees that we are going to accept everything. We obviously have to review what we've done in the past and what the community is talking about, but sure, pass it on. Oh, this one. And is... <laughs> Ryan wants us to know that Publix has their Heath bar cookies that are soft but crispy and sweet but salty. I just don't even buy them because I lose control. How about you, Lauren? Is there something you can't stop eating? Well, this reminds me. Once you open me... the bag, it's all over. <laughs> Ryan T's comment here reminds me of. Um, brown butter chocolate chip cookies because they are also a bit salty. They that you have the salt on top, but they're sweet, but they're also savory a little bit. Um, 
so I just they have they're they're just so dense and I fall asleep after eating one but I will this is embarrassing I will eat like two big cookies of those and then I and then I'll fall asleep on the floor I have no control either it's bad. you know what's my recent addiction is Trader Joe's gummies. Has anybody here Ooh. eaten those? Because really they have good. seasonal ones and they have the Valentine's Day gummies now and I'm just like eating the whole bag. It's just, they just slide down my throat. I just can't control them. Oh, I really want those. I, I need to do a Trader Joe's one. Actually, since Trader Joe's does all their things seasonal, another dessert that I really like is, I believe it's after Valentine's Day. It's in their spring period. They do... The Trader Joe, the Joe O's that are like Oreos, but they are cinnamon bum flavored. The candy they cane. Have it huh? Oh. They, they, they do I like the candy cane JoJo's. I didn't have the candy oh. cane ones, but they do a different flavor for every couple months. So I, I, I should try those. Oh. Those sound really good, but you have to try the cinnamon bum ones. Well, 7 eight wants to know, is this dare about sweets or loss of control? Well, you can certainly explore that theme if that is something you would like to try. We do have a charcoal workshop with a few openings. That is a Saturday, so you can register for that by going to the front page of our website, artprof.org. Oh, that was totally out of order. I'm sorry. That should have been <laughs> further down the slideshow. Okay, so anyway, the Art Dare Leap is if you want to do something more... Uh, ambitious. And so we'll ask you to create four different artworks and make the art dare stuff and hang out with us in the discord. I mean, Lauren, isn't it so fun to pop in there and you just see all these different ideas throughout the month. It's so cool. Oh yeah. I mean, we're talking about like say TikTok and shorts and being addicted to that. That's my same thing. Every time I open discord, it's hard for me to close it. So I have to be careful with my time on there. <laughs> right. So to officially enter, you want to tag us on Instagram, art.prof, and you want to use hashtag artprofdare. But if you don't have social media, we do have a Google form, which is on our website. So you just want to go to Art Dares in the menu. And if you scroll down to the Art Dare page, it's not up by the way, I have to put it up, but we do have this Google form so you can submit if you are not on Instagram. And another reminder, join our Open Studios Club because I feel like I'm going to get so much work done now. I mean, it's so selfish of me to think about it that way. No, <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I need oh. the accountability or I don't make anything. Well, because I'm always like, oh, this is more important. Oh, I need to do this. And then it's like the day is over and I haven't left any yeah. time for the creative stuff. Oh, Same. Story of my life. So let's talk about the charcoal workshop again. Can you tell I uh, this together at the last minute? But there is also a clothing and drapery workshop at the end of February as well. Join our Patreon group. We have so many cool things happening in there. You can share your art in weekly voice sessions. And uh, Lauren, do you think we can peer pressure Ryan T to take the charcoal do workshop it, right it, now? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I, I, in all seriousness, though, I can't think of a better person to learn charcoal with than Clara. Ah. I mean, I, I've taken your class and you almost yes. got me to like charcoal. Like, you definitely taught what? me a lot. <laughs> well, apparently it didn't work on Jordan. No, it didn't work like on Jordan. <laughs> totally allergic. Thank you so much to our amazing top Patreon supporters. You guys are so important to us. We would not be here without your continued support. Visit artprof.org. We have tons of content out there that's not on YouTube. Use the search bar. Artprof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And guess what? That is Pom Pom's butt on the <laughs> left-hand side. And on the right is Gumby, who gained five ounces since we got him two months ago. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> was five ounces a lot for a guinea pig? Well, he was only 13 when we got him, and now he's 18. Is he a baby? Is like he's a baby. I've got no concept of guinea pig growth, but con congratulations to <laughs> Pom Pom and Gumby. 
<laughs> yes, they're they're very exciting. We're starting to get to know their personalities better. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot to put in the slide. Oh my gosh, I'm yeah. so disorganized. There is a Discord chat. I'm sorry. I hope everybody <laughs> heard that. Oh my god, you my need a break, voice. Clara. I do need a break. So anyway, Lauren will be it's in the Discord be and she will be there chatting with you. Since apparently, I don't know how to make slideshows anymore. So hang out with us there because we would love to see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.